Welcome to Valuation. I know many of you come in with preconceptions about what this class is about. And rather than feed into those preconceptions, I'd like to talk about what this class is not about. And in the process, perhaps, perhaps, you will get a sense of what this class is about. I know for many of you, valuation is a set of equations and formula and models, and perhaps that is what you're expecting to get, a science. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but valuation is not a science. It is a craft. And the essence of a craft is you learn through trial and error. There is no perfect way of doing things. There's a better way of doing things. Put simply, you don't learn valuation by talking about it or watching other people talk about it. So I hope that this class will help you learn valuation as a craft by doing it. You will find that as you work through this class, it will get easier. When you start, it's going to be difficult. That's the nature of a craft. And as you get more comfortable, you'll start to get more comfortable also deviating from a script. Rather than cook from a recipe, you'll be able to cook on your own. Second, I know for many of you, you're expecting a class built around valuing publicly traded companies. You want to value the Coca-Colas, the Airbnbs, the Ubers, the Facebooks of the world. And that's okay. That's pretty much what many people think about valuation. But I hope to make this class much more than valuing just public companies. I want to talk about valuing private companies. I want to talk about valuing small companies and large companies, developed market companies and emerging market companies. And along the way, what I hope you will see in this class is the principles of valuation are universal. You don't re need to relearn valuation to value a specific group of companies. You just need to take the existing principles of valuation and apply them differently. Along the way, we'll talk about how value can be different from the inside when managers look at a company as opposed to the outside as investors looking at a company. Not because the principles change, but because managers control more of the levers. They can change the way a company is run. By the end of this class, I hope you can value just about any kind of business, small or large, in whatever sector, in whatever market. Third, I want to draw a contrast between two words we use interchangeably in investing, value and price. Let me set this on the table. If I believe that markets are efficient, what I'm effectively saying, the value and the price are pretty much the same thing. And if you believe that, there's really no point taking this class. I believe that the value of, a, of an asset is driven by cash flows, growth and risk. And we're going to talk a lot about how to value an asset in this class. But we're also going to talk about how to price that same asset. What does that mean? To price an asset, you look at what other assets just like it are being priced at in the market. And I'm going to argue that the pricing process can give you a number very different than the value process. We're going to go through both valuing and pricing assets along the way, and we're going to look at some investments that cannot be valued. Currencies, for instance, cannot be valued. They can only be priced. A collectible cannot be valued. It can only be priced. Fourth, I'm going to surprise you. I know many of you are going to come into this class expecting to see Excel spreadsheets. And I'll make a confession. I've never opened an Excel spreadsheet in the context of a class. To me, the essence of evaluation is not the collection of numbers that make it, but the story behind the numbers. You're going to hear a lot of storytelling in this class, but storytelling with a purpose, where every number in my evaluation is connected to a story, and every story I tell you about a company is connected to numbers. Finally, I don't believe in valuing things just for the sake of valuing them. I'm a pragmatist. I believe that if you value something, you need to be willing to act on it. What does that mean? If you find something to be undervalued, you have to be willing to buy it. You're saying, so what's so difficult about doing that? You're going to recognize that there's a difference between figuring out that something is misvalued and acting on it. And that difference can be bridged only with faith. Faith in what? Faith in your own value and faith that markets will correct, that price will move to value much more difficult than it sounds on the outside. So what I hope to during this, do during this class is not just deliver the techniques and the tools of valuation, but give you some insight into how you can connect stories to value, the difference between value and price, and how you go about acquiring the faith to be able to act on your valuations. I hope you will find this class useful, no matter what perspective you bring into the class.